Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to talk about virtual scrolling in Angular material. The first thing that we need to do is to understand exactly what virtual scrolling is and when should we use it. The best way to understand virtual scrolling is to see a situation where we need it. It's usually needed when we want to scroll through a large list of DOM elements. So imagine that you have a list on the screen with thousands or even hundreds of thousands of data elements that you want to scroll through. That can cause performance problems to the browser and virtual scrolling helps to solve that. Let me give you a quick example. Here in the playground of our course, we have here a screen called virtual scrolling. This is just a sandbox. It's just a playground where we are going to be demonstrating our virtual scrolling capabilities in Angular material. Now, let's have a look at the component. The component simply creates here an array with a number of items. So here in your example, we are creating an array with a hundred items and we are just creating strings that are numbered according to the index of the array. So a very simple items element containing an array with a hundred elements. Let's have a look and let's display this on the screen. Let's make it inside the scrolling container and let's progressively increase here the size of the array until we hit performance problems in our browser. In order to see here this playground component in action, the virtual scrolling component, in our application, we're going to need to add here a small menu entry in our side menu. Okay, so now back here to our virtual scrolling component. In order to see the problem that virtual scrolling is solving, we need to display the data on the screen. And that's what we're doing here. So as you can see, it's a very simple component. We are simply looping through our list of items using the standard ng4 directive and we are printing out this to the screen. This container here where we are printing out the elements is a scrolling container. So it has a limited height and if the number of items exceeds the height of the container, then scrolling is going to be needed in order to see all the elements. Let's now start our sample application. Let's switch here to a larger window and let's have a look at this initial example. So here we are not using virtual scrolling and we have a hundred elements to scroll through. As we can see, there are here no performance issues. The scrolling happens without any problem. And this is because there are not yet a lot of elements in the DOM. If we inspect here the HTML of our page, we are going to notice that all the elements here are present inside the DOM, even if they are not visible. So for example, here, this is the list item 83. And if I scroll up, I'm going to reach here the border of our scrolling container. And if I go here to the other elements before the element 81, they are all still present in the DOM, but they are hidden. Look at it. There are tens of them here present in the DOM and they are spending memory and they are making our application potentially slower. Right now, we don't notice any side effect simply because 100 elements is not a lot of elements at all. But imagine that you are trying to build some sort of spreadsheet component, for example, that has to display thousands of data entries, even maybe hundreds of thousands. What would happen if we would take this approach, loading everything into memory and then trying to build DOM elements for everything and only showing a few ones inside the scrolling container. We can simulate that here using our component. Let's switch here to our virtual scrolling component and let's, for example, use a thousand elements instead. If we try this out here in our demo container, we are going to see that we can still scroll through this list without any problem. A thousand is not a lot yet. But let's say that we increase this, for example, to 20,000 elements. That's a bit more. Let's see how our screen behaves. We are going to reload our server, switch here to a larger window, and we're going to see that we're going to have to wait for a while for our component to load. And this is because all the DOM elements are still being rendered to the DOM. So as we can see, after several seconds, the rendering process is not finished yet and I'm going to wait for this to finish before continuing the lesson. Oh, there it is, it stopped. It took maybe 
10-15 seconds to render all these DOM elements. And as we can see, if we scroll down, everything is here. But as we can see, this is tremendously wasteful. All of these DOM elements that are not visible by the user are still present here in the DOM, consuming memory and slowing down the startup of the screen. Now, you might think that the performance issue is being caused by the presence of too much data, but 20,000 strings is really not a lot and that can be generated very fast, so that's not what's making the application take so long. What is delaying the application is the number of DOM elements that we are adding to our page. In order to help solve this issue, we are going to be using virtual scrolling. With virtual scrolling, we are going to be rendering to the screen here only the elements that are visible in the scrolling container and the other DOM elements that are outside the visible range of our scrolling container will not be rendered to the DOM. So we will detect here the scrolling event and we are going to adjust the content of the scrolling container depending on the scrolling position without creating any unnecessary DOM elements. And we're going to see that the 20,000 strings are going to be handled by our page without any problem. So let's see how we're going to do this with Angular Material. We're going to switch here to our template and now, instead of using the ng4 directive, we are going to be using Angular Material Virtual Scrolling. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove here the use of ng4. So we have here an empty list. Inside the empty list, we're going to be creating here a virtual scrolling viewport. So this is the container element that is going to contain our list of elements to which we want to apply virtual scrolling. We need to take here the CSS class that defines the size of the scrolling container and we need to apply it here to the viewport. Otherwise, this will not work. If you have a look at this CSS class, as you can see, it simply sets the height and the width of the container and also it activates scrolling by default just so that it's easy to demonstrate virtual scrolling in this component. Now here at the level of this viewport, we need to define the height of each element and we can do so by using here the item size property and in our case I know that the height of each element is about 48 pixels. Now that we have our virtual scrolling viewport in place, all we have to do is to loop through the items and display them. But instead of using ng4, we are going to be using a special directive called CDK virtual 4. So this has the same public API as ng4, so it works in the exact same way. But instead of creating all the DOM elements in the list that we are looping through, it will apply virtual scrolling to them. So let's loop here through our list. We are looping here through the items array. And let's go ahead and let's display the item. And just one quick fix here before we continue. So it's not mat item, it's mat list item. And with this, we are now ready to try out our virtual scrolling solution. So let's go ahead and let's reload here our page to check on the initialization time. So as we can see, it only takes a second or so and our screen is initialized. So this proves that it was not the amount of data that was causing the delay. It was the rendering of the DOM elements. We still have here a list that we can scroll through perfectly. And if we scroll down to the end of the list, we can see here the last element. But if we inspect here the DOM, we are going to see that here at the beginning of the list, we only have 10 elements or so. So let's scroll up here to the beginning of the list. Let's focus here on the first element, as we can see here. And if we now scroll down, we are going to see that we only have a few of these elements in our list. If we now scroll down and we select here the first element of the list and we inspect the DOM, we are going to see that this is indeed here present at the DOM. But if we scroll here through the list, here our material list, and we count the number of items, we are going to see that we don't have here 20,000 items. We only have here 
10 items or so that are ready to be displayed in the DOM and in response to the scrolling event, these items are going to be updated here by our virtual scrolling directive. Notice what happens when I scroll through the list. We are constantly updating here the content of the list item according to the scrolling position. To further demonstrate the capabilities of virtual scrolling, let's go ahead and let's try this out with a lot more data elements. So instead of 20,000, let's say that we add here 100,000 elements to our array. Let's switch back here to our larger window. We're going to go ahead and we're going to refresh the application and notice that the initialization of the data is almost instantaneous. So as we can see, the amount of data is really not the problem in terms of performance. We managed here to do virtual scrolling through 100,000 elements without any problem. What was really limiting the performance of our page was the number of DOM elements on the page and virtual scrolling helps to address that. Let's now explore a little bit more how virtual scrolling works. So here going back to the template of our demo component, we have mentioned earlier in this lesson that the CDK virtual 4 directive has the same public API as ng4. So everything that you are used to use with ng4, you can also use here. For example, you can get access here to the index of your item if you need to. You can do so by specifying here a new variable that we are going to assign the index value. So index is a variable filled in by CDK virtual 4 that we are making available here in our template. In a similar way as we can access here the index variable, we can access other typical variables of ng4. So I'm going to add here all of them. All of these are accessible here via CDK virtual 4. We have the count variable. So this is like index, but it's one based instead of zero based. We have here a Boolean flag that indicates us if this is the first element of the items array, we have a last flag and we even have even an odd flag that are very useful for styling with alternative backgrounds, the even and odd lines of our table. As we can see, this directive works exactly like ng4. So it makes it super convenient to use it in scenarios where we are looping through a lot of data and we don't want to cause performance problems in our page. And with this, we have finished our coverage on Angular Material virtual scrolling. Next, we're going to cover another advanced feature of Angular Material, which is how to create a custom theme for our application.